All right, all right, all right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you're listening to Thursday night on the TMA Radio Show Music Mix. That's right, you're listening to the best gospel, the best praise talk show in America, the TMA Radio Show. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just going to give you some announcements, the weather and more. We want you to stay tuned tonight because we did have a, me- a mix up earlier today. The music just won't play. What in the world was going on? Ah, but I got it back right, man. I had to reset, reset the server. So we're good to go right now. So I hope you got your hands together. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Yes, yes. All right. We give God some praise for Thursday is the last night of the week. But guess what? We're going to tap in tomorrow to uh, Cutting Word Ministry prayer line um, at 7 o'clock. Where we going in ancestry, ancestry prayer, and we going to go to God, Amen. So I want you to tune in for a special episode tomorrow night at seven o'clock. We'll be broadcasting live, and after the prayer is over, Amen. And our, any announcement that may be given, we will cut it off then. All right. So enjoy and sit back right now and relax for a Thursday night. You got one more day of the work week. Hallelujah. Come on. Tonight we're looking at a low of 52. Friday high of 70 with a low of 40. Saturday chance of rain and showers high of 47 with a low of 42. Sunday chance of more rain high of 56 with a low of 44. Monday mostly cloudy skies high of 57 with a low of 47. Tuesday partly cloudy skies high of 78. 
uh, 68 degrees, almost 70. 68 degrees with a low of 55. Wednesday, mostly cloudy skies, high of 70 with a low of 59. And then Thursday, chance of rain, high of 68 degrees. That's your seven-day forecast. And it looks like winter gone already. We like we had a week of winter. People like, I, I, it's just so cold. It ain't been but a couple of days. It ain't even been cold to me. The ground ain't even hard. I, you can't even kill hogs in this winter, in this type of weather. You know, back in the day, you know, when we was growing up in the 70s, late 70s, 70s, and 80s, early 80s, 80, 81, 82, you know, we killing hogs, people. Hey, man, we, 83, 84, we killing hogs, man. And you know what? The ground be so hard, the grass uh, starts to crackle. Y'all remember how cold it used to be? And it used to snow three or four times in the year. Man, but now I, and, and these these jokers talking about that's not, <laughs> they, we don't have global warming. These are the uh, people that Trump, they, he picked some people talking about they won't know, uh, it ain't global warming. Man, look, people that messed up this earth. Yeah, yeah, the people, the industrial companies, those that fracking, pulling up, pulling every resource from the earth, cutting down every tree. They, 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 man, they tearing the earth all to pieces. At least, you know, when we had all the trees around, it did help the ground shield, be shielded from the sun. And, and now, you know, then you fracking, putting all these chemicals into the ground. You just turn the earth up and then you sucking every bit of oil out of the ocean. And you drying up the earth and you talk, and the weather's changing, time changing. But you know what? The Bible said we wouldn't be able to tell the season. So, hey, that's what it is right now. Uh, somebody was saying today at, at the job that came through, uh, one of the clients were like, you know, uh, they had somebody, that, uh, their neighbor had a, a water pump problem. And they went out there to the water pump uh, and a moccasin was out there. Good gracious, man, a moccasin. And you know, I'm, I'm trying to tell you right now, you know, even the animal don't even know what, what, what season it. They confused. You got flies, bees out everywhere. You snakes crawling around still. Yeah, well, you know, the bears haven't even hibernated. They still looking for food because they don't even know if it's wintertime or summertime. Or they, they out eating still. They ain't even slept none. They gonna be so agitated because normally that the bears go and hibernate for the winter, but they ain't been no winter, so them jokers hungry and mad because they can't get no sleep. Man, everybody off balance. I tell you, boo. But they act like it's nothing uh, going on with the earth. Man, come on now. I'm not a weatherman, a meteorologist, or none of that. Scientists neither, and can tell the different changes of the seasons. I can tell. It don't take a rocket scientist know that we 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 agree ready to have 57, 68, and 70 degrees weather this coming coming week, and 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 we in winter time. Come on now, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be 30s and and and, and low 40s. You getting up here about 70 degrees. You springtime weather. Good. Woo. Man, that's, you know, I mean, I know people, you know, a lot of people don't like cold weather. I understand that. But I, if it's wintertime, I want wintertime weather. I love wintertime weather. If, if it freezes, let it just freeze. It, it's, it's supposed to do that in its proper season. And if you want hot, just wait till the summertime. Maybe ha hibernate, ha hibernate like them bears. <laughs> <laughs> Put on all the jackets and coats and gloves you want, the toe boggers you want. Put your earmuffs on and everything, long johns, everything. If you cold, put an extra pair of socks on and let you be all right. Because I know that this season, this wintertime season, I, we need cold weather. I'm sorry, we need cold weather. Hey, Amen. We, we back in the day, we killing, man. You can see even in uh, October, we was talking about how October we used to go to the Lewisburg High School football games. Back in the day, and you outside with your uh, coat on, your bomber. Y'all remember back then we was we were wearing the bombers, wearing the bomber jackets, and you out there breathing. You see your 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 breath of a uh, 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 steam up in the air. You out there at the football field with your hot cocoa. This was in October, y'all. This was back in the day in the eighties. Y'all understand? Back in the day, you go around there now, now in the in the in the October, November, it's a thousand degrees outside. <laughs> it's one hundred million degrees outside. What in the world going on? But this is Thursday night music mix. We're gonna have some labs announcements. I just gave you the weather, so we're gonna keep it, keep it going, keep continue to listen. It's, it's a lot of interest now in the life of Christ, and that's beautiful. People asking questions, you know, secular people asking questions. I heard somebody that asked this question, he posed this question, and I thought it was interesting. They asked, well, was Jesus married? And I was like, wow, no, the scripture doesn't say that. You know, that's all you got to go by. And I thought about it, I said, wow, what if Jesus was married? You can imagine that. Can you imagine the pressure that would be? 
you, you done took the, the form of man to come to this earth to do nothing but die for our sins. And look, and you got pressure of being mad on top of that? That's pressure. <laughs> uh, Mary makes you a test what I'm saying. You God on this earth performing miracles to die for our sins. You come home from hard day's work, wife waiting on you. Look at you. <laughs> Where you been, Jesus? <laughs> huh? Where you been, huh? Where you been, Jesus? You've been gone for a while. So you mean to tell me you've been gone for 40 days and I'm supposed to believe that you were just in the woods fasting and praying. I must look like a fool, you Jesus. I'm tired of this here, Jesus. I'm sick of this here. You probably was out with your little 12 friends. They're always following you around. I don't trust none of that Peter, that I don't even want to turn on as soon as they get a chance. I don't trust none of them. Now they got to follow you around, you have to wait on you to feed them and all of that. It don't make, this don't make no sense. I'm sick of this. And I'm, I'm hearing things in the street, Jesus. What's this about some woman crying and washing her feet, your feet with her tears? What's up with that, Jesus? Huh? Why she gotta put her hands on your feet, Jesus? I'm sick of this here. Some other woman took going around tell people all she had to do was touch your garment. I, I don't appreciate that. What, what she gotta be putting her hands on you, Jesus? Try this, Jesus. I need, I need me. You save everybody. You need to save your marriage. Time for me. I need you to talk to me, Jesus. How come every time I ask you something, you gotta answer me in parables? And talk to me, Jesus. Talk to me. <laughs> that is pressure. <laughs> Imagine no. Imagine the pressure Noah was under. You've been building an ark for a hundred years, and it ain't rained yet. It ain't never rained before, you wife. You know what you do with that big old thing in our yard? Spend all our money building this doggone thing. I'm just gonna rain. You need to tear that thing down and get our money back. It ain't never rained before. Got these nasty animals in my backyard. Get the nasty animals out my backyard. Got me round here itching. I'm sick of this noise. Come on, I think I'm getting on the ship with you and all them animals. You got no thing coming. I ain't going. And my turn ain't going neither. That is pressure. Imagine Jonah. Imagine Jonah coming back home after three days. You come home and tell your wife you've been going in the belly of a whale. Where you been, Jonah? You've been going since Thursday. You gonna come in here and tell me that you was in a whale? That's all you can come up with. the best you can do, Jonah. Girl, he said a whale. He been going all weekend. A whale, girl. <laughs> if you're listening to this CD right now, you ought to have a reason to say hallelujah. Because I declare that the storm is over 
that's in your life right now. Help me, GDP. Hallelujah. that right there because I know I do. I love it. I love it. Man, that's some great music right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, the announcements for tonight, <clears throat> Healing Word Ministries, Winter Revival, Deliverance 2017, The Purge, February the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th, each night, 7.30 p.m. nightly. The address is 211 South Bickett Boulevard, Lewisburg, North Carolina, 27549. Amen. We're so excited. Our guest speaker will be Apostle Michael Branch out of Long Island, New York. Amen. So we're going to be tag teaming that revival. Amen. And then our moderator will be Apostle James Talley Jr. out of Durham, North Carolina. We are so excited about the people going to be in the midst so they can be revived. Amen. Deliverance. Amen. We call him amen for a deliverance revival. Amen. Because, you know, we... People go through so much. You know, you you need this. We need church every day, it seems like. You know what I'm saying? All the stuff you're dealing with, all the stuff, all of the stress, all of the stuff you entertain every day, 300 and some 60 days a year. Uh-uh. That's a lot. Amen. That's a lot. 
That's a lot. Also, on this third Sunday, third Sunday, our power with the word guest speaker will be Apostle James Talley Jr. Now, there's two ways you can listen in on this third Sunday, our power. You can call the Circle Blood Prayer Partners line at 218. 218- Five four eight two eight four eight, and the code is eight one zero five six. Or you can tune in to this broadcast. We'll be starting at seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this uh, Circle Love Prayer Partners and the Timmy Radio Show sponsors the Third Sunday Hour Power with the Word. And also, the Circle Love Prayer Partners will have a, their annual revival. Amen. Uh, January the 23rd through the 27th, 7 p.m. nightly. And and just a year ago this month, we was introduced to Evangelist Linda Ellis and the Circle of Love Prayer Partners. And the Circle of Love Prayer Partners, they go and pray interceding for people all around the globe. Uh, or whoever contact them or send them a message, they go, amen, praying in 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 the gap for people all over. Because I tell you one thing, we can continue to pray for one another because no one would be left out if we did that. So again, this, this is sponsored by the Circle of Love Prayer Partners and the Timmy Radio Broadcast. Monday night, Apostle uh, Kelly Russell. Tuesday night, Pastor Clinton Wilkins. Wednesday night, Pastor Nino Ackridge. Thursday, Evangelist Linda Ellis. And then Friday, Apostle Michael Branch will be on this broadcast giving a word. So listen, we know you busy schedule, but I'm telling you right now, this is not a time to sit and relax and cross your feet. It's time to fight. And I gave a word the other day. You need to make sure that you're at your battle station because the fight, hey man, the war is on. Hey man, and you, we got to get together, man. We got to stop going nonchalant like there's nothing going on. You see, the things are changing in this world so fast and rapid. Only that those that know because they sit and still they looking while they're they're teaching, while they're preaching, while they're teaching and the word of God and, and also loving on people. We uh, are not in a fast pace like so so many of our brothers and sisters in this world they so busy trying to get this and that done they trying to get their sales at a different level they they trying to you know they working they doing all types of activity they doing this and that everything so fast forward and a lot of people are missing what's really going on and so sometimes you got to start slow walking this thing i didn't say stop i didn't say it we're gonna we're gonna slow walk so we can gather the intel on what's what's going on only how you can gather that is you take Take time to really look and see out in the world what's really going on and it's it, it's changing so fast so rapid you know and, and people so worried about donald trump being in office you we better be worried about getting ourselves delivered and set free because you know what it's up to us to do to make to to make things happen you can't rely on a president to make things happen you got to make things happen for yourself i told these brothers today at the job i said you know we so busy we got people out here just they say all types of comments. They so worried about what's going on and, and, and all of this. Listen, you can't worry about these public ofi- uh, 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 officials. You can't because you got some work to do. We so busy worried about, uh, uh, we talked about uh, on social media today that they, they repeat, that I think they repealed Obamacare, which they gave uh, Obamacare the name. He, uh, B- uh, President Obama, he just accepted the name in which they named it, Obamacare. But it's the same uh, uh, type of care, uh, uh, the AC, what is it, ACA, uh, the Affordable Care Act. It's the same thing, and they appealed it. Now, now people that, that really voted for Trump that's on this ACA going to have a problem with all of this stuff. And matter of fact, their cost going to go up and everything going to go up. The premiums and everything going up. It's going to go sky high. But we ain't going to worry about that. So my point in saying that is what I told them today, we so worried about what they going to do. How about our culture get together and we have our own health care uh, service? You know what I'm talking about? We wor- worried about what the government going to give us. And, you know, because some of us might be entrepreneurs and we got to buy into this stuff and we need, a, you know, sisters. We got to get hip. Well, how? why don't our culture people, we got all these people, amen, doctors and nurses, we can ha- and, and business people, we can have our own medical uh, of uh, insurance company that, that that can cater to how much we can afford, and we ain't got to worry about that. Matter of fact, we have to get our own hospitals and get our own uh, 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 doctors' offices, and, and and start paying into it. You know, we can come up with plans fifty dollars a month. You got um, you got eight million people, 
at fifty dollars a month coming into that plan. Look how much money they got going into that uh, medical insurance. And then you're gonna pay. It, then if you got to pay your fifteen dollar copay, or, or or then pay for your prescriptions, you know, or your fifty dollar for your specials. Okay, that's out of pocket. We can pay that, you know. But the thing about it is, it's just having insurance. And and if they don't want to accept insurance, then you create a facility that will take it. See, you 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 worried about all this crazy stuff. You need to come and use your brain sometime. You know, we got all these 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 million millionaires that that these black brothers and sisters that are multi millionaires. They, they got some billionaire women like Oprah Winfrey, and you got LeBron James, you got D Wade, you got Michael Jordan. All these brothers and sisters making millions and millions of dollars could put their money together and be some facilities and not even worry about the crooks out here that's stealing our money. You you just see this, 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 this you got to come up with a plan. You got to have a plan, but then you got to have a heart that want to help. Hey Amen. You ain't got to sit here and worry about what the government gonna do. Just build some, just build some. Stand it, stay in the guidelines of what the, what that requirement is, and offer that for your people. Hey Amen. Who gonna take care of you? You know we got to take care of our, our, our people, man. You don't understand? Hey Amen. We got to take care of our people. We ain't worried about. Uh, they done changed it. People just, you know, yes, it's a disaster. But then this is the time where you need to put on your thinking caps. Amen. Amen. Put on your thinking caps. So that's the Circle of Love Prayer Partners Revival, January the 23rd through the 27th, 7 p.m. nightly. Uh, also, Healing Wood Ministries will have worship service this Sunday at 11 o'clock. The address is 211 South Beacon Boulevard, Lewisburg, North Carolina, 27549, right beside the KFC in Lewisburg. We're right across. We can just walk to, through the grass and to KFC. That's how close we are. So I'm just giving you that you don't need to be flying down the road. You, you see KFC, you start slide, slowing down and looking. Hey Amen. If, you, if you're coming from, from uh, south, if you're coming from south 401, you gonna it's, it's uh KFC gonna be on the right if you coming up from North 401 down to South uh Biggie Boulevard uh then you can you know we're gonna be on your left so make sure you just start slowing down because sometimes you know our feet get a little heavy and you go past it like uh, I done passed it because <laughs> you flying you know slow down and check things out again that's 11 o'clock worship service and then on uh uh next Tuesday night Amen next Tuesday night. Uh, we will be broadcasting at 7 p.m. Cutting Word Ministry Prayer Line, Apostle Michael Branch. If you like to listen to this broadcast, tune in at 7. If you uh, have a, a loved one that can't get on a computer or cell phone or uh, 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 a tablet, then you can have them to call that prayer line at 712-775-7031. And the PIN code is 640-892319. All right, that's your announcements for tonight. We're going to continue this broadcast on Thursday night music mix. When I'm done, the very best I can.
God is our all in all. Amen, amen. Let me tell you something, man. I sure miss my grandma, but I'm telling you one thing about my grandmother was something else. I'm trying to tell you right now. She didn't mess around. She wanted. She always kept her house clean. She all. You never found my grandmother looking shabby. She always had her hair done, her nails done. She she always dressed. She always had her high heels on. She always was a classy dresser. Amen. But I'm going to tell you right now, my grandma was something else. We hate to see her coming as a child because she, you know what? She, she she come to your house and visit. She did not stop till she went to everybody's bedroom and checked your room out. And if your room won't right, she said, you need to clean this mess up, boy. It don't make no sense. You're like a devil had a thousand fits in here. But I tell you right now, she would, we see her coming up in the driveway, boy. You ought to see us running to every one of us. Me, my brother, and my sister all running to our room, throwing stuff under the bed, putting stuff in the closet. I remember I cleaned my <laughs> I had my room cleaned up. Well, it looked like it was clean anyway. When you walk in, it looked like it was spotless. She said, I know you done put this stuff in the closet. I said, Grandma, I ain't in the closet. Don't go in my closet. And I'm over there standing against the closet. I already know. But she like respect the deck when she came by the house. She didn't stop. She supposed to be your guest. I know she your grandma. She's supposed to come in, take a seat, relax. No, she get she don't even stop. Put a pocketbook on her oh, arm. She going through all the house, through the room. Man, making sure I roll clay, boy, I tell you, I sure miss my grandma. I tell you right now, at, almost at 100 or 102 years old, uh, just a couple months from her birthday, she passed away. But Lord, Lord blessed her so good, uh, 101 and a half years old. Man, I tell you, that that's a long time in the, in the world. That's a lot of, that's a century <laughs> in the world. Amen. And she just seen a lot. 1914. Uh, who the president was in 1914 when she was born. Can you imagine that? And then uh, she was born in 1914. And you imagine, uh, uh, I don't even know about my great-grandmother on her side. They didn't talk about her too much. I know she was a slave, but I'm just not sure uh, uh, who my great-grandmother was on my grandmother's side. But I imagine she was born in the 1800s. Uh, you, can you imagine the 1800s? Wow. But my grandmother was a trip. And then I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, you know, kids are different today because when we was kids living in the house, you had to go to church. You had to go to Sunday school. And, and you know, uh, we tried we tried to lay there after you hear them calling your name. You hear them call your name, you're just so tired, don't want to get out of bed. You're going to stay up and watch TV at about 12 o'clock. The black and white TV, Robert, Roller Derby was on late at night. Or uh, Kung Fu Masters, <laughs> Kung Fu was on. You watching Kung Fu late in the hour. And, and, and you know, they don't call you a couple times, they don't hear nobody move. Next thing you know, you hear them old belts clinking. Boy, I tell you right now, when you hear them belts clinking, <laughs> I don't know, we just laid there. But I tell you, when you heard them belt, that belt buckle shake, you can hear them because all the belts buckles was all together. Them things sound like Jingle Bell <laughs> when they start moving. Man, I tell you what, we got them belt, boy, the feet, every feet in the house start moving. I'm trying to tell you right now, this is, boy, I tell you, the old stuff, the kids today, they sleep all day, you, you call them, they won't even move, and then you won't even get them up, they stand there, you, if you, you go to church, they need to go to church, hey man, they don't pay no bill, you, you paying the light bill, you buying the groceries, uh, uh, supplying the ride, up and down the school in the town, and you over there got them laid in bed, you can say, well, I'll just leave him here, he won't get up, no, he ain't gonna get up, he get up, he gonna get up, <laughs> he gonna get up, hey man, he gonna get up. Uh, that's right. So make them jokers get out of that bed. I, we had to. We we didn't die, you know. <laughs> we might have slept. We might have slept in, in 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 the back seat, but we we didn't. Uh, hey, we didn't get. We didn't stay at home. No, we ain't stay at home. Well, you them them belts mean you gonna get up out the bed. Uh, make you go. You go go. You go get up. <laughs> they didn't play around. Hey, Amen. We thought that was hard, but the day kids they don't even want. You know, you don't even whoop them because you scared. To, the government gonna come in and now the law didn't never say that you could chastise your child. It don't never say it anywhere. It says abuse. Abuse and chastise is a totally different thing. If you take take some yeah, take your fist and punch it, punch him in the eye, hit him up in the head, now that's abuse. If you take a hot iron and stick it on their skin, that's abuse. But when you take take a switch and and, and get that bottom in, <laughs> that ain't abuse, that's chastising. He could get over that. I don't understand it. We let the that the that the courts and the and the politicians and people that don't think people should whoop their children that that's why I, that's why they took it out of out of uh, uh school. Because because of certain people didn't want other certain people to whoop their kids. That's all. And they need it. Now they can't even do nothing to their kid. The kid in the in the grocery store talking about shut up, mom. I, you call them all types of stuff and they sit around, no, Johnny, don't do it. 
Man, <laughs> knock that rascal out. <laughs> knock him out cold. Because I remember my daughter, she was, uh, I don't know, maybe about three years old. You know, they start uh, having their little fallouts. They don't want to do right. She walked in. We was going to Walmart. Oh, she was just out of the basket. I mean, just won't do nothing. I just took a little hand and nicely popped it real good. And guess what? I ain't had no more problem going to Walmart. I ain't had to. T- I didn't have to think about my daughter. I ain't had to. I ain't had to get her uh, but a couple times. And she know. I, all I gotta do is say, babe. All right. Do you need that? To, um. No. No, sir. And she'll get right. I ain't all I gotta do is just bring it up. She ain't got to. I ain't got to do it. Just bring it up. And they know to get right right then. Because they remember, you don't play with your kids in the beginning, you don't have no problem later. You don't have to beat them all the time. You get, you let them know at the beginning, I'm serious. I ain't playing no jokes. Look, this is what I want you to do. This is what I need you to do. And <laughs> get them jokers right. You sit around here worried about them, and you ain't going to do that. And then don't forget they're going to be 16, 17, 18 years old. Amen. And then you won't, then you're gonna have, you want to fight them like a, like a grown person because you ain't done did nothing when they was a child. At, you see, y'all know that's real talk tonight. Y'all, y'all probably seen it in the community. And then, then you got some parents, they arguing back and forth with the kids. No, I, don't, I ain't going to talk too much. I don't like talking too much because after a while, I got to catch myself. I ain't, look, you just do what I tell you to do. I'm not going back and forth with you. And then just mean it. And then just mean it. And I know sometimes you got to, you know, as hard as it hurts you. You know, it hurts us too as parents to chastise our kid. But just, you know what? Sometimes you just got to you got to do it. You got to do it. You feel sad to, to really chastise your, ch- your child, especially when you love your kids. You hate to really chastise them. But guess what? You do it, and, 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 and hard as, as hard as it hurt, guess what? Just walk away and, and just do your chastising and, and walk away. And, and you 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 understand it, it'll get it get better by and by. But <laughs> my grandma around, she ain't play no jokes around. She ain't play no joke now. And then my grandma, <laughs> when I was a child, I used to call grown people by their first name. And she said, "Boy, you better put a hand on their name. That means you better put some respect on their name." We don't teach our kids now. They they you could be they you could be old enough to be their daddy. They will still won't call you Nino. They want to call you John and Mary and Jane. They don't want to call you Mister Sir, Brother, uh, 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 nothing. You know, in, in the church, you know, uh, uh, we really should teach our kids. See, we done lost that. We don't even want to teach our kids in the church the the proper respect when when an adult is in a, in the in the building. You know, everybody ain't the children's age. You know, they might want to be, they, they might be like 9, like 8, 7, 12, 13 years old. And, and you could be their daddy, be their mama, and here they come calling calling you Murray. Uh, Murray, come here for a minute. Like they one of their friends. Y'all need to teach respect again. You We call your honor, your honor. We don't call the judge by his first name. Uh, uh, we don't say, uh, Thomas, I'm here today to defend myself. No, you, you, he wants you to give him respect. So why don't we teach our kids that in the ministry? You know? It ain't it, even if they don't say uh, uh if they don't say uh, uh deacon uh, uh uh deacon John they can say brother John but at least teach them say brother or uh, or uh, uh, sister Sally or um, uh, mother Mary you know teach them some respect you know some things we should keep you know that now I'm saying that's some things that we should keep in line with teaching our kids that, that especially when it has some some benefits from it you know. It don't make no sense. You got the young folks around here now in ministry. They just calling people all out their name. You know, you ain't teaching them no respect. But they go to school and respect the teacher. They do, don't they? They go there and say, Miss Johnson, Miss Thomas, Miss Perry. Don't they do it? Miss Zawaskit. <laughs> they do it, don't they? Mr. Lucas, Mr. James. You know, don't they do it? You know, Lewisburg principal, they say Mr. Harris, but they put Mr. and Mrs. and Miss on on proper name because they in the adult figure. But you want to sit around here and let your child call John, which is about 50 years old, old enough to be your, your child's daddy. You know, you correct that rascal. He need to say Brother John or Mr. He can say Mr. John, but in, in ministry, we can say Brother John. Brother John, how you doing this morning? Teaching them something, you know, teaching them something in this in this day and time. Everybody just let them speak to everybody in the kind of way. You know, I'm I'm almost at the point that these little kids call me. I'm about I'm about to act like I don't even hear them. <laughs> and y'all won't teach them at the house. Just act like you don't even hear them. Like uh, you ain't talking to me. I'm just, <laughs> I don't even hear my I, I ain't got my hearing aid on today. I don't hear you. <laughs> hey man, I don't hear you. All right, we're gonna keep the broadcast going. Keep on pumping. Amazing. 
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see so clearly. Oh. 
But then they don't want to put the cookout on the boulevard. They say they want to put it over there by McDonald's. But uh, still no signs and tales of uh, cookout because we know if cookout come into town, you can't beat that that cookout tray. I don't care how many burgers <laughs> McDonald's have because I, we, we, we know that uh, Burger King ain't going to stand a chance. I mean, versus a Whopper. That Whopper going to have to be 99 cent <laughs> all day, every day because you can't beat the cookout tray. 477. Uh, uh, not, not even maybe five five oh three with chain with tax, you can get uh two sides. <laughs> I mean, you get a uh, uh, you can get two sides, and uh, uh two main meals, a burger, and a and, a, and another item, and a and a French fry or hush puppies or onion rings, and and a and a tea or drink soda or something for for five oh three. And, and the burgers are good. <laughs> they go, they go eat somebody up. Cause we said it. Uh, uh, with 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 um uh, with with little mamas coming in town, the Italian restaurant when they was building that, we 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 knew we just we talked about it. You know, sometime we get it first glance. Uh, that that the uh, home run pizza won't be in business long. It won't cause you you just can't match the quality of product, the quality of taste. You just can't match it. And, and sure enough, you know, we won't trying to speak it, but you know, we just business, business people talking business. And, and you know, so if cookout come in town, I mean, Burger King and Wendy's, 
they might they might look out. Might maybe hardest too. Hardest gonna have they, they already got the what the sixty nine cent um sausage biscuits. They might gonna have to have some sixty nine cent cheeseburgers or something. Cause if a cookout come in town, that's gonna be it. And they could cookout stay open all night, uh, or at least about one to one two o'clock at the night, man. <laughs> they, they, they ain't gonna make it. And then now they got uh, what that Carolina barbecue that they're supposed to have, I guess, a buffet bar. Uh, John is uh, unless John is better his portions, por his portion size, uh, he gonna lose my business because I go in there, we spend twenty twenty some dollars every time for for two people. J that's takeout, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, and I'm still hungry. I mean, I'm looking at the portion size. I'm like, good gracious, you know. They and, and how they, you know, they have gloves on and the servers. You will. You got a whole bunch of servers standing around. Those are in this area. You no, know, you go to Johnny's. You ask for a combo or whatever your food. They, you know, they take the gloves. They get the shrimp, your hush puppies and stuff like that. You know. And I came up with the solution. I know why my my shrimp is so small. And I always get the large shrimp plate, but I claim it ain't large. It ain't so. It ain't large to me. Cause my wife, she gets the small side, the small uh, shrimp plate, and I'm sitting around here looking at her shrimp plate and looking at my shrimp plate, and I'm like, both of these look almost identical. Like I thought, I want to see a little bit more of my plate than yours, cause you got the small plate. I don't want to see the same almost exact plate. You know, I might well get the small if they gonna do me like this and pay less money. But you know, I, cause I mean, I do like the way they batter the shrimp. I like their home battered shrimp. You know, they batter all their shrimp by hand, like like uh, Mayflower do. And so that you know that's good because everywhere else in Lewisburg, whether you go to uh, Granny's or um, you know go up to uh, was that Dairy Castle, you know they all have that that pre bag already breaded shrimp and all they do is put it in the grease. I don't really care for that. It's just it don't even have no taste like like I like it. So anyway, and, and I just realized that what has happened a lot of times. See, you got some grown women in there with grown size women hands. And then you got some of these high school students with these little small high school hands. So if, if they, you got a, a grown one giving you two hand sizes, and, and then you got a child or a teenager with the smaller hand giving you two, you know they're going to be different. They need to get them a measuring cup or something and put my shrimp in because paying t almost $10 for my plate. And I'm looking at, man, I'm still hungry. Then my wife, she be feeling so bad for me. She said, baby, it's going to be all right. You complain about it all the time. I said, look, if I'm going to pay $10, like if I go to Mayflower and pay $10 for a shrimp plate, man, I can't eat, they can't even hardly uh, uh, close, the, close the lid on it. <laughs> you know, I'm, give me my shrimp, man. And then they count out the hush puppies. Hey, I, I'm telling you right now, y'all. Y'all see me tripping out at the uh, the shop, man. I I, I, I keep them laughing because I'm telling you right now, they 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 kill me up at Johnny's uh, barbecue right up there in front of Walmart. They count out them hush puppies, man. You get a plate, man. You count four hush puppies on your plate. Now they got a 50 pound bag of hush puppy mix, and they over there count my hush puppies out on my plate. And at the end of the night, they throwing away a does uh, a whole box of uh, a hush puppy. Man, you know when we go to the barbecue lodge and, and uh, uh, Riley. Man, they every meal take out if whether you get chicken or barbecue, man, they give you a half a bag of hush puppies. Because that's the easy thing. You can you making a thousand hush puppies and, and, and you ain't even use your bag up. And you got a fifty pound bag you probably pay eighteen dollars for because you buying in bulk. I know because I worked at Bojangles. I knew what we bought and bought. So, so you know, you ain't paying that much when you're looking at that, how much how much it costs. You Because you're buying in bulk. You, know, you got a 50-pound, 25-pound, 50-pound bag of uh, a mix, a hush puppy mix, because you're a business. And you sitting around there counting out hush puppies. Man, give me some hush puppies. I mean, they count out like everything. They seem like they count out the French fry, like one, one thousand, two, one thousand. They count out French fry. They count out hush puppy. Man, what in the world going on up there, at Johnny's Barbecue? So I'ma tell you, if Carolina Barbecue is good and I got good service, and I can go in there and and and, and like almost the same price as what I'm paying for Johnny, and I can eat in and eat buffet, they I, they gonna get my business. I'm sorry, I, I won't be going back to Johnny's. I won't be going back to Johnny. Johnny gonna have to do better, man. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny plate shouldn't be like you know seven ninety nine and more eight dollars if you get a plate. But, you know, it sh you shouldn't go have to go in there and take out you know like they you eating at uh, 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 Olive Garden somewhere now. If I, you know, if we were somewhere like Olive Garden, you know, or, or Lucky Thirty Two, those are the, some of the five star restaurants back in Winston Salem. Lucky Thirty Two and 
you know, a, 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 a four star, five star restaurant. Man, me, I'm, I'm expected to pay. You know, I, you know, I, I expected to pay where I eat at. You know, if I eat at nice places, I understand how much it's gonna cost. Uh, that's that's fine, but you know we we in a little old town, man, and you 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 got two plates and you over twenty something dollars, and then you look at your your portion size. I'm like, man, and then the look size, you get your little your little, your little string beans in a cup, man. The cup is like an old swish cup, like like you put swish in, uh 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 uh, uh to to swish around in your mouth. That's how small the cups are, man. The cups so small, I mean, I was like, what in the world are they doing? I mean, at least are they uh, 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 saving some stream beans for later or what? And then, you know, I ain't bashing them. I'm not going to bash them. But my wife sometimes get that dessert up there. You know, they supposed to make homemade cake. Man, that cake be so dry. I'm like, how in the world are they going to sell this cake? Man, they cut you a big piece of cake, but you need two two glasses of water to drink it, to eat it with. It don't make no sense. But I'm like, good God, man, I, I, I can make a cake better than what they make. At least my cake, my cake be so moist and so soft. You be like, man, this cake is moist. But they cake up there, man, be so dry. Be like, man, man, when, when did y'all make this cake? Oh, we made it this morning. You made it this morning. It's dry already. This cake look like it's about three days old. How you want you go serve me some cake so dry? And then and, and then the thing about it, people touch the top of the cake with the ice in it. Oh, the ice is soft. You think the cake soft? You get home, the cake just as dry as I don't know what. Like they got cotton with with icing on it. <laughs> you know, like you eating cotton. You yeah, ain't want no cotton, man. I want a soft piece of cake. You know, if, I don't care if it's homemade. If it's homemade, you still go have some soft cake. Miss Florine here in Louisville used to work at Louisville Elementary, make the best cakes in the world. I mean, you know, if you're an eater like me, you know t good tasting foods. You know when you go to a nice restaurant, you can taste all the flavors of different spices. You know, that's just the way I am built. You know, hey, I can taste f different spices, even homemade sausage. I can taste the sage and the peppers and all the, if it's blended right or if it's not blended right, I can taste it. I can tell it. So anyway, Miss Florine, man, cooked the best cakes, man. When she was able, uh, some years ago, man, she cooked a, a sheet cake, man. One half was chocolate. And one other half was uh, uh, coconut. I don't really eat coconut. We had it at a Christmas uh, uh, dinner, and, and we got her to make a make us a cake, man. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that cake talk tastes like a wedding cake. That booger was right. She make her own all, uh, icing from scratch. Her cake, man, everything from scratch. No, no box. And it was just as soft as anything. But you go up to Johnny. Next time y'all go through Johnny, y'all try a piece of that cake and see want to be dry. Be dry as I don't know what. <laughs> like the sun done shine on it eight days. That sugar's got dust on it. <laughs> you chewing it. It's supposed to be cake. You, you breathing out dust. <laughs> I know, Dave. Hey, I told you this is uh, Thursday night music mix and laugh. We just going to town with it. We just going to town with it, baby. I, I tell you. Well, Johnny gonna have to do better. He gonna have to do better than them desserts and everything else. I don't like no dry cake, man. I'm sorry I keep talking about it, but that thing, you know, you you know, eat your food, you get ready to get your dessert, and that thing just is terrible. And then your your portion size and your food don't look like nothing, and you don't spend your money, man. I said, man, come on now. I could have went and uh, bought me some shrimp and did it at home, but and, and made me a cake. I mean, they need some instructions on how to make a cake because that cake, I'm talking about that, they must be missing eggs or something. <laughs> they ain't put no eggs or something in their cake. I know y'all, I'm like, man, y'all just don't understand, man. You got, you know, when you done ate a lot of different places, and I'm going to tell you right now, especially when you, <laughs> I ain't going to talk about church vote, but you know how you do when you go to this, uh, have these banquets at the church, man, and, you, and everybody wants you to try their food. And they so happy about their food, but you to mess around in and taste somebody's food that ain't worth five cents. You be like, dog, I don't even want to eat this man. You you got a plate full of something that you don't want. I don't want that cake from Johnny's bull from uh Johnny's uh barbecue. Uh-uh. That thing dry dry as on the what? Like dust. <laughs> like you eating dust. <laughs> you done took some out the vacuum cleaner and start eating on it. <laughs> And slap some icing on it. <laughs> and now you think it's a cake. Man, that, ain't, that, that stuff tastes so horrible, man. I told my wife, look, I said, look, baby, let's don't get no more dessert from over here, Johnny. Uh, that stuff is dry to death. You got to try to, you got, you can't even holler swallow it. You like, it like taking two, it like taking three or four big horse pills together. You, it won't go down, it won't go down your throat. It ain't gonna go, it ain't gonna go down your throat. I'm like, golly, man. I'm like, I'm over here trying to find some soda so that acid or something, that soda will digest this cake, man. <laughs> what the world wrong with it? Y'all, I'm sorry, but I'm just to tell the truth, man. I, hey, you know, I, you know, I love to eat and I like the taste. Just like that, um, 
just like that sweet potato pie that Patty LaBelle uh, uh, endorsed. Oh, she's supposed to be making pie, but when it came out, it was somebody else making the pie. It was they ingredient. Man, that pie so horrible. I don't even want to pay 50 cents for, for, for a Patty LaBelle pie. She over there, and then had this guy, he done made this video like it's the best pie on earth. It's like that pie put you into another dimension or something. And I sit around here, we finally got one. We we need, look, everybody got a slice of that pie, and, and it, it was almost a whole pie. We just threw that mess in the trash. That stuff was garbage. My mama make a better pie than that. You know, and my mama made some good pies. I mean, some good pies you know you taste the potato in the pie the, the, the cinnamon is, is is right you know it all of it, it uh, 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 combined together it tastes so good but when I bit that pie and all I could taste was cinnamon I couldn't even taste a sweet potato in the pie and then it was so mushy like I'm like what in the world is this I'm like it's like jello I don't like that uh uh that pie won't worth a nickel Y'all, I'm trying to tell you, you can get these jokers to tell you something, they'll say you it, it's like, they don't care how I tell you, it can taste like a, it can taste like a shoe, but they'll be like, oh, this is the best shoe I ever had. <laughs> <laughs>
it up tonight thursday night music mix <laughs> laugh announcements has already been made and the weather's already been told and you hope you enjoying tonight's broadcast because we just we just sitting here with our funny moments i'm telling you right now man i, I don't want to do dry cake from uh, johnny's barbecue anymore in my life Hey man, they gonna have to. They gonna have to. I don't know. I mean, a little debbie, <laughs> a little debbie cake about better than the cake they making over there. I'm trying to tell you. And stop counting our hush puppies, man. You get your box. You count about four hush puppies in the box. You they done made a thousand hush puppies in, in, for the day. They ain't even put a dent in the bag. They got a 25 pound or a 50 pound bag of hush puppy mix, and then they counting out hush puppies. Man, just give me a handful of hush puppies on my trip on my plate. How how in the world do 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 Mayflower? They they just throw you some big uh uh, uh <laughs> some big hush puppies up there, them round hush puppies, and then you you good. Matter of fact, you can't even eat all of them. You got you carrying like at least two or three home with you. Matter of fact, when I go to Mayflower, we eat in. Me and my wife, when we go decide to go to Mayflower, we eat in, eat our food. We always go with a box because we can't eat it all. It, it, we can't eat it all, man. We got shrimp and fries, and, or we do baked potato. We can carry that home, and then we, you know, we got hush puppies. We got enough for another meal. And you eat, you go to Johnny's, you go eat that book up there. You still looking for a snack? You like want to pack of crackers or something? I need something else extra. Let me get me some cereal. <laughs> you, you don't eat dinner. Let me get me some cereal. I want to eat me some cereal. Them pits twenty three dollars on, on two plates, and there you want some cereal. That's a shame. <laughs> it ain't that I'm greedy. No, I'm just like, ain't fool. You know, I know my limit. <laughs> I know my limit. I know it ain't buffet. I can't even hardly eat at buffet no more, you know, but at least I want my, want to be right. <laughs> you know, you done ate it up. You still looking around. You scratching the plate. Ain't nothing else there. <laughs> <laughs> if you eat a baked potato, you eat you done ate the whole baked potato up. You you done scratched the size <laughs> size of the potato with your fork so much you, you see the you see the pillar from the inside. <laughs> hey man, I'm trying to tell y'all better do better over there, Johnny's barbecue. I ain't playing around with you. I ain't playing around with you, but don't you worry. But we're gonna check out this Carolina barbecue the place when they get ready to open up. And I think they're supposed to have majority of those places was, uh, especially the one in Crete or our um, buffet. Now, I'm going to tell you, Carolina Barbecue, you coming into town, don't act like you're going to be $15, $16 uh, for your buffet now because I, I ain't going to be coming around like that now. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not because they got a place up in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. When we go to the Carolina Beach, we always got to stop at Casey's uh, bob uh, Barbecue, Buffet and Barbecue. Casey's Buffet and Barbecue, they on my page. Uh, matter of fact, me and the owner friends on Facebook, um, you know, this brother um, had a, uh, think he had a heart attack or um, he had something. He was very, very sick and almost not made it, but the prayers, amen. We prayed, even prayed for that brother that owned uh, Casey's Buffet and uh, Barbecue. Man, they, that's, now they're a soul food restaurant and they're, they're my uh, white brothers and sisters up in uh, Wilmington. Wonderful wife, uh, wonderful family, man, you know, call around and talk to you man just welcome you man i love that and so anyway man we went up there man they had everything on their bar on their buffet i mean they have collard greens turnip salad stream bean cabbages they got corn they got peas they got hoop cheese and biscuits they got cornbread fish uh for those that like chitlins they got chitlins they got fat back they got uh uh roast beef they have uh uh fried chicken that's out of this world shrimp 
I mean, they got the whole work, so they barbecue, and then the desserts, they got peach cobbler, they got blueberry cobbler, they, they got ice cream, they got cookies. I mean, all of, for I think it was $13 and it included the drink. My, that's everything, with taxes, everything, $13 and something, including your drink. They always have been, they always will be busy, because they trying, you know, they got all that food up there, man, they still are cooking food, man, and, and it's good, too. It's good. So, I'm telling you, Carolina Barbecue, don't you think you're going to come into Lewisburg and be $15, 16 $17 buffet and, and make some money? You need to keep it reasonable. Now, now you need to take a take a note for some of these these other ones that's doing good. And, and, and you might need to do $13, including your drink, all you can eat buffet. you going to make a killing in Lewisburg. I'm trying to tell you. They, I don't know who their marketing person is. But see, sometimes the people, society has to get, they done got to the point now those business owners think that they, that, you know, because they got to raise it up. See, basically because they say their business is not growing, they got to charge you basically for two people because they're not getting the business. They don't realize that it's the lower your, your, your product costs, the more you're going to get, you know. You know, you go somewhere and they, and you know, they double charging you. You know, they double charge you, or they ha at least ha they charge you for a full price and charge you half a price. You know, so so what they, they what they doing? Because they know they're not getting the business, or they know say they in their mind they say, um, we're not getting the business. We're gonna have to raise our price because we're not making it. But I'm telling them that 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 should be the opposite. You should you should better your product for one, and then cut it to a cut it to a point have it at a at a at a, at a rate that people can they're gonna they're gonna come in and like uh man and they're gonna tell somebody you you keep it 13 dollars the, the new buffet the new buffet place come in there the new buffet carolina barbecue buffet come in town when they open up it's 13 dollars including your drink if it's good i'm gonna yeah man look carolina barbecue man just opened up man 13 dollars all you can eat and it come with a drink they gonna say what and a drink too they going I'm a great, hey, I went to school for for marketing. I went to Winston-Salem State for marketing. Hey, I, my, my mind just continued to roll. So I'm trying to tell you, man, they, they need to, they going to have to start talking to some of these people today, man. Get some ideas and some pointers or something, you know, because I I, I know you could get a, you can get a lot more uh, $13 than you would $17 in there. I'm telling you that right now. You know, people going to go and then check it out, but they ain't going to go, they ain't going to go like that. You know, they will, might go once or twice a week. They might go for lunch and then go for dinner throughout the week. They might go Monday for lunch and and go Friday for dinner. You you don't got you don't got right. Well, how much you don't got right there for, from just them two visits? You 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 now got twenty six dollars from the two visits from one person. Just think if you got two hundred folks in Franklin County or five hundred people in the whole Franklin County continue to go to your business, at least they gonna go get lunch and they might come back again on Saturday to bring the family. And it's gonna be more because they bring the family. You see, you don't talk. You don't see how the strategy work. Y'all are talking to somebody <laughs> that always thinking about the numbers. And I'm telling you right now, uh, it don't take me no time. I was telling them brother today, they were just laughing because look, I, I was giving them plans. I was like, look, you cut it down to this and you do this. Look at the numbers. You got to look at look at the numbers. You want something, you got to look at the numbers, man. That's it. You know, a lot of people could go in there. You go in there and like $13 in there. Uh, 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 I come in there by myself. I go to lunch. I'm like, man, this is good. So Friday, car, I'm bringing the, my, my wife, the kid, and and that's go and the kids. They might, you know, if it's $13 for an adult, you know, you could do the kids buffet about seven bucks. Cause they ain't gonna eat like we gonna eat. You can do seven dollars, including the drink for kids. Now look at that. You done made a, you done made thirteen dollars off of me on on Monday, and then I done brought my wife and my child in there. <laughs> my wife and my plate again. The buffet gonna be uh what twenty six dollars, and the seven and the seven that's fourteen. Look how much. Look look at what you got. And then you got all these other families in there. You gonna keep rolling. <laughs> you gonna keep rolling, and then maybe after three years or so, you might want to go up a couple nickels. Cause see, that's what Bojangles do. See, Bojangles has a strategy. They don't want you to uh uh really look at their prices like they uh go to the next dollar. They they keep it very minimal. They might go up a ten cent, five cent. You know, they they might go up a little bit. You know, they'll go up a little bit throughout the the year span. So so they ain't trying to hit you with a uh, dollar off the bat. Them combos, if uh four you know, four ninety nine, they ain't gonna go five ninety nine. They gonna go four maybe four twenty five or four fifteen. And they trying to keep it at the minimum, still under that five dollars. You that's what it used to be, man. Yeah, they done went up a little bit more over the years, but 
I'm, I'm just giving you some pointers, people. I'm just telling you the truth because that's the way it is. But let me just leave, leave you with this, and I'm going to tell you, uh, we're going to play something for you. And I want you to listen to this brother because his brother talking some real stuff. Because you know what? A lot of time we spend so much time trying to help everybody else, and we don't never have time for our own self. Y'all check this out right here. Listen, let me know what you think on the comments. I'm telling you, you can make whatever kind of money you want to make. You can have whatever you want to have. You can do whatever you want to do. Like, there are no limitations. And aren't you tired? There's some of y'all out there right now. You're tired. You know, somebody telling you when to come to work. Somebody telling you when to take lunch. Somebody telling you when to do a vacation. Somebody telling you what you can and cannot do. Some of us, we were born to fly. But what I'm telling you is when you become the right person, what I mean by the right person is once you identify who you are and you begin to separate yourself from the masses and you begin to see your individuality when you begin to see your talents when you begin to see your personal skills all right it's like this if you ever wore a suit from the store before that's one thing but if you ever got a suit tailored are you hearing what I'm saying? If you ever got a tailored suit before, you know that it's different from going to buy a one-size-fits-all suit and then having a suit that's tailor-made. It fit different. The pants are different. The way you walk in it is totally different. Why? Because it's fit to you. And what I'm telling you is you need to have a tailor-made life. When you were created, you were created with a specific purpose, a specific design. I don't care if you was born and, you know, your parents didn't claim you. you still special. I don't care. If your mama went in your life, your daddy went in your life, you are still special. When you were created, you were designed to do what nobody else can do. And I'm telling you, when you become the right person, when you become the right person, what you do is you start separating yourself from other people. You begin to have a certain uniqueness. As long as you're following other people, as long as you're being a copycat, you will never ever be the best copycat in the world. But you will be the best you could be. So I'm telling you, number one, number one, I'm telling you to define your value, right? Number two, I challenge you, listen to me. If you want to make more money, if you want to be more successful, if you want to have and do stuff you ain't never done before, number two, I'm asking you to invest in you. That's right, invest what? Number one, I'm asking you to invest time. I'm asking you to invest time in yourself. Some of y'all, you spend so much time with other people. You spend so much time trying to get people to like you. You spend so much time trying to fit in that you don't even know who you are. You know other people more than you know yourself. You study them. You know about them. You want to hang out like them. You want to be just like them and you know what you've invested so much time in them you don't know who you are i challenge you to spend time by yourself i challenge you to take yourself out there's some young ladies right now you fine you pretty you got it going on some brothers you handsome you suave you got swag but you know what your problem is you, you you've been in one relationship after another relationship and you ain't never been in a good relationship because you don't even know you you spend so much time taking her out you spend so much time trying to impress him you spend so much time buying her flowers taking her out to lunch you spend so much time calling him you don't even know who you are. You heard what I said. You've invested so much of your time in being liked by other people, being loved by other people, being appreciated by other people, that you don't even know who you are. And I challenge you to invest time in your own self. I challenge you to get to a place when people don't like you, it don't even bother you no more. Why? Because you're not concerned with trying to make them happy because you're trying to blow up. You're trying to get to the next level. E.T., I don't like the fact that you do this. I don't care. I'm not living my life for you. I'm living my life for me. Who are you living your life for? Someone else or are you going to live your life for you? That's 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 just real talk on that right there. That's real talk, y'all. We got to start sometimes thinking of ourselves too. We neglect. How many times we neglect our own self? You so busy, you don't have time to have a me day. Sometimes you just need to have a me day. Amen. So many people out here, they might not have a, a significant other, but I want to encourage you to have a me day. Amen. You you spend time taking care of other folk, but you need yourself a me day. I, I tell people all the time, you know what, if you ain't got nobody, uh, a significant other, a friend that you can, you know, you, you, if you're dating or whatever, you ain't too old to be, have a friend. You ain't too old to date. Amen. You can still live holy and have somebody else of the opposite sex. You know you know where you, you stand. You know where your limits are. Don't be afraid. But I'm going to tell you right now, we spend so much time taking care of others, catering to others, going this place. How many times you just sit back and just take a me day? Go get you some ice cream. Go get your cone of ice cream. Go treat yourself out, out 
by yourself to uh, Red Lobster or, or, or to Olive Garden or, or to Texas Roadhouse or somewhere like that right there. You know, uh, t treat your, your own self out. Eat by yourself. Dress up. Put on the best uh, perfume you can or the best cologne you, you got in the house and put you up some, some nice uh, rags on and, and go on out and, and look good. Matter of fact, if you driving, clean your car, but have that book on right and just go out. Just If you got to go out by yourself, go out and treat yourself out. Amen, y'all. Amen, y'all. All right, I'm gonna just read something from us from my uh, Facebook feed, and uh, it says here that in the midst of uh, in the midst of it all, in the midst of it all, we got to praise God by Linda Ellis. Amen, Evangelist Linda Ellis. In the midst of it all, we have to praise God because we do. And even in our storm, we got to praise God. Even in our sad hour, even though we, we feel like we don't want to praise, we ought to praise. That's when we ought to praise the most. Amen. And another quote she gave us tonight, you got to go through God to get to me, a child of God. Amen. That's right. Because God going to protect his children. Hallelujah! When when uh when the, when the children of Israel was, was uh suppressed by their their enemies and they cried out to the Lord, boy, that activated the Lord's heart right there, boy. That had and he turned in and he he protected them. Amen. Don't don't you be talking about us. Amen. Don't you be talking about us. You better watch back. <laughs> It'll be like them old uh them old uh Bill Cosby show. You better watch back, Jack. <laughs> You better watch back, Jack. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I'm just enjoying tonight's uh, broadcast. Uh, we just having a little fun tonight. Amen. Just laughing tonight, talking about these restaurants and things. And my grandma, boy, back in the day. I'm serious, man. I remember back in my day, my grandma, she used to, I used, when I was really, really small, when came down from uh, Jersey, my grandma used to make me stand in a wash tub, man. Old big salad wash tub, that old big clove wash tub, the kind that they 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 uh, uh put that that uh uh that hand washer, that hand, clothes, you know, when you wash clothes by hand, put that in there. And had, that's how she was. She wash her clothes in, or she wash the salad in. Oh, no big old thing. Then she'll get that a hot boiling water. And she'll pour that boiling water in there and let it cool just a minute. And then she'll get in there and bathe me. Y'all don't know. And then she'll put set me uh at the get me a table, set me at the table. Especially if it was doing breakfast time. Man, my grandma was the best cook in the in America to me. <laughs> to me, I mean, she know how to scramble some cheese and eggs and make them homemade biscuits. I just couldn't get enough of them biscuits. And then she'll get get me old pe uh uh my old molasses and put some butter in and stir it up. Man, y'all don't know how to eat baby <laughs> y'all don't know how to eat boy them, that's some good eating that we don't eat like that no more well, that was some good old eating right there i miss that old eating right there boy i, I used to love sopping some uh molasses and then she had those biscuits my grandmother couldn't uh uh she didn't go to school i i think she might have went to first or second grade I, if that much, I think I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure, but she never knew you know how to read a lot of measurements and stuff. But it was somehow she knew how to cook them biscuits. And them biscuits came out right every time, soft and right, man. I'm, I mean, she just and I don't understand how the world she make them so good, and she can sit them in that little old tin box on the stove, in that little little tin uh, it was like old something tin had a little uh top that you twist and it could open up. Uh man, she put them up there, man. Two, three days, them boogers still soft. You you take them biscuits now, and buy them out the store. You leave them up, leave them out all night. See what you got tomorrow. You got a, 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 a lethal weapon. You got a rock because you, you put somebody out with them biscuits. Them biscuits be so hard. Like what the world they done put in the biscuit? How how my grandma make these biscuits? They they can stay on the stove two or three days. Then you get these canned biscuits. You you leave them out one night. You you can't even mash them. <laughs> even mash i hope y'all have a good time with me tonight because i'm so i'm enjoying the show enjoying laughing and thanking god for all my listeners that tune in tonight and listen in on the show if you enjoyed the night broadcast leave me a comment on my uh page man i love to read your comments and all the love that you show even if the ones that show love on my facebook page i want to thank god for all of you Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. And also, just remind yourself, you know, normally Fridays, we, we, we don't broadcast Fridays and Saturdays. But we will be broadcasting this Friday at 7 o'clock. Because we're going to God to, uh, to, with prayer. Amen. We're going to God with prayer tomorrow at 7 o'clock. 
So I want you to tune in. We will be logged into uh, Cutting Word Ministries prayer line, and we're gonna be going to God in prayer. So you got some issues, you got some stuff we need to pray for. We gonna pray. Hey man, we gonna pray. The corporate prayer. We gonna pray. We gonna pray because we know that prayer work. Prayer changes things. And if you got faith, prayer will do so much. Amen. I'm telling you, you just got to believe it. You got to believe it. Amen. I tell you, I love love uh, playing on this radio broadcast. I thank God for four years as we continue to strive out. You know, uh, for the like, I think it was the second year. Yeah, the second year, going into the second year and a half, I was talking about how uh, we plan to expand. I, and I, you know, I don't. Sometimes you just don't know how God gonna do it, but you just know He gonna do it. And so we just thank God for those that will uh, be pledging uh, yearly to this um, broadcast to the Tim May Radio Show. And also, uh, hopefully we're gaining more people, whether they're going to be uh, pledged, whether they're going to pledge to this broadcast, or they're going to be partners with this broadcast, or sponsors for this broadcast. You know, uh, I know that sometimes we, we know that the, the pledges are sponsored, they sponsor us. But the sponsors are, uh, 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 in general, uh, we're looking for those with a business and a, a, a product and a service. Those that are business owners with a product and service that we can advertise for them. And we have very inexpensive prices to do that. Amen. We'll broadcast whether they want us, we can, depending on which one they pick, we can broadcast their, their service and products every day that we broadcast. Or if they choose to do two times a, a week. That's fine. We can do that as well because we we here to help one another as we grow, you know, and we praying that their business continue to grow too as well because we know that, you know, everybody paying big money in in, in marketing for their uh, products and services. And, and you know, a lot of times it it, it could work, but a lot of times you don't know if it's going to work or not. You hoping it's going to work because you know, people are listening. You know, as people continue to listen in all around North Carolina and in America and then all over the country. But but we thank God for this worldwide radio ministry that is heard all over the world and not not just here in the USA, but all over the world. But at the same time, we, we do tar- want to target those business owners that are here in the USA to to the point that they can uh, pay into uh, letting us advertise for them. Amen. So that's what we want to do because we know that all these funds coming in is to not only to help build this radio ministry, but we want to target these less fortunate children or the, the those that are homeless, don't have a place to stay, don't sometimes don't go without meals, or or they been or they walking around with shoes that you know is talking. You know the flaps. Uh, you can see the shoes raising up as they walk, and we are, we <clears throat> we see that. We ought to be able to take that brother or that sister or, or, or find out what they wear and, and go buy them some shoes. Go buy them a jacket. <clears throat> go buy them an outfit. But it takes money. It takes money to do this stuff. And not only that, other stuff as well. We want to be able to, to go to the park and, and, and uh, 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 you know, get the park for the day or for whatever hours they allow us to have the park and, and, and do hot dogs and hamburgers for the children. See, this is all what ministry about, <clears throat> but it takes funds. It takes funds, and we're going to get to work on it because the more you, you sow love out in the community, the, the, the more these kids realize that there's real people out here that don't have no, no agendas, but they just showing love. They just showing love. Amen. That's what we're talking about tonight. So God bless you for tuning in tonight. Again, tomorrow night, which is Friday night, a special uh, edition of the Tim A. Radio Show for Friday night at 7 o'clock. Tune in. Be ready to, to go to God in prayer with us, and we'll see you then. God bless you. Yo, these streets is watching and they need no binoculars to see imposters. The streets need gospel. In faith, we're blind, sick, possessed, and dead rise. And mass murder does nothing for the paralyzed. But yo, it's all me, it's different. It transforms lives. So first the lame walk and then the lame ride. And when the lame talk, that's when his name fly. Even in places where it's illegal to say God. AK hits the door, they hit the floor. Clutching the very book that they searching them for. And even though these refugees ain't seen church they memorized every verse this is for the eight-year-old who goes home to the favela singing songs under his breath i
acapella That preteen weeps on the streets of Boston This the price the crocodile tears look constant Nails in a back that was shredded like a cheese grater These lines bring heat like the equator And in the street we ain't fighting what we see player Wrestle the air condition, AC Slater You have to fix the mind before you can bestow the blessing Because until they get their mind right Everything you invest in them is going to leak out of the crevices of a mind that refuses to change Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have a mind to change? Change, change from Angola to South Beach, big like Lebowski. Gonna fly us home, want a window or a aisle seat. Lift two arms to the place where the clouds be. Even if you eating from where Oscar the Grouch be. The good news is he's coming real soon. And if your stomach aches, then he's coming with food. And if your heart breaks, then he's coming with tools. And if you have faith, then he's coming for you. you. Yeah, he's coming for you. And if your life's gray, then he's coming with hues. Rose from the grave for these colorblind fools. Poured out his red and it covered our blues. And here's some more good news. That the situation changes when your mind renews. Here's the time to choose. Red or the blue. Win or the lose. Awake or the snooze. The street guy. 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 Wait for an answer. If they said no, drag them to the altar. Tell them they got till midnight to get that fix. Lay your hands on your head and say, give me a new mind. Give me a new mind.